Welcome back to God's 411. My name is Jim and this is my lovely wife, Kim. Today we've got a really interesting video. We are going to talk about does God slash Jesus allow Satan to cause us suffering and trials? Let's just start out by answering this question, okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> right? Yes, God does allow Satan cause us suffering and trials, which to me, and maybe to you guys, I, I don't know about you and you, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. I was going to say exact same thing. Were you really? I mean, it's like, okay, how could a loving God who loves me, who cares for me, who wants nothing for the best of me, allow Satan to do that? Well, we are going to answer that in this video. We are going to give you two examples from the Bible, which are super interesting. Which are the only two. Are they the only two? They are the only two really? in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take a look at why in those stories did God slash Jesus allow it? Story number one. This is Peter's denial of Jesus. So the disciples are all gathered in a courtyard, kind of huddled around a fire. Jesus is going back and forth between Herod and Pilate, and, and then this story takes place. Read away. Okay, so it's Luke 22, 31 to 34. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny three times that you know me. We've all heard this story, but this is, let's just go a little bit deeper into let's this. Look at okay, this. Yeah. let's look at this. So first of all, you have to look at Jesus' tone. Of, of his his voice, right? Right. I mean, he's going like, Simon, Simon. Yeah. I mean, it's that kind of like, you know, her to go, yeah, Kim, yeah, Kim. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's that kind of right off the bat. It, Jesus sets the tone yeah. for this like story. Right. Like a parent. So number two is what, this is what fascinated me. Satan demanded to have you. Demanded. I mean, that is a very powerful word yeah. and I looked up in the concordance it basically has the meaning of he asked he requests it's not as as, as powerful yeah. but it's still the fact that Satan is sitting down and having this conversation mm -hmm. with Jesus saying hello I want that guy right, right there and then you notice that Jesus didn't say no nope. you know I told Satan he couldn't have you he just said I'll pray for you and he's praying for him. Mm -hmm. And he's going to pray for him. To me, it's kind of saying, I know this is going to happen, but I'm praying that you're going to come through this okay. And the other thing that I think we need to take note, this is important, I believe, of why Jesus allowed Satan to mess with Peter, is his confidence at the very end of this story. It's like, you know what? Nope, Jesus, I'm here for you. I'm gonna to go to the death with you. So the other analogy I think is, is important is the sifting of wheat. What does it mean to sift wheat? Well, you know, if you watch um, videos about how they sift wheat, it's a big process and there's a quite, a bit, quite a bit going on, but they are getting rid of everything that's inedible. The shaft. Yeah, the I mean, don't they either beat it yeah, or they'll, they'll the sift it like this yeah. or they'll thrash it. And so it's, yeah, throwing it in the air. I mean, it's a big process. So you can kind of get a, visual, a visualization of what Satan is going to do to Peter. I mean, he's going to be, <laughs> yeah, ha, 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 you yeah. know, and shafting. Yeah. Peter's going to be going, oh my goodness, yeah. you know. It's going to be hard on Peter. What can we learn then from this story about why Jesus allowed Satan to go after Peter? I believe that Peter had some growing up to do and Jesus knew that he only maybe had 50 days with Peter. He was gonna be 
the rock that Jesus built this church on. So he had a huge responsibility. A little bit of life application time, okay? Okay. So what does this mean for us? We are put through trials and trials equal suffering. I mean, the two kind of go hand in hand. I believe that Jesus does this or allows us. Let's say he doesn't do this to us. He right. allows yeah, this to happen that. for our growth. Because, I mean, face it, we have been through a lot of trials in our life and we have grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. You know, if we would have never had those trials, we would still love Jesus, oh, yeah. but our faith would not nearly be yeah. as strong as it is today. I mean, do you have anything oh, to add? Oh, things. I mean, yeah, I mean, not just your faith, but just your whole connection and relationship with God yeah. just blossoms. And it's really hard because it just sounds so, oh, it's just great to suffer I and know, have trials, you know? Not, I, but I wouldn't look at it sometimes as a bad thing. I mean, I think that sometimes I look at it, it's like, wow, I mean, Jesus has a confidence in me and us to know that maybe he sees something in me that he wants to use and he needs me to grow as a person. And the way that I grow through sometimes, not all the time, is through sufferings and trial. And I come out a stronger, better, more powerful witness or whatever for him so it's not all bad no but for you to even come to this point where you're <laughs> able to say that yeah, is true. because you had to go through your trial absolutely to see that happen and how god works in your life and what you're gonna what you're gonna see when you go forward yeah that's a good point because that's a really like good point we're gonna read in the next story it's about praising god during your trials if you guys would like to support our ministry, you can do so in several ways. You can look at becoming a channel member and supporting us monthly, which there is a join button right down here. You can also help us out with a one-time donation. Uh, there's a link in the description. And Kim makes these really great looking Christian t-shirts on Teespring. We will also include a link in the description. Check it out. Next. So story number two, and I am sure that you all have heard the story of Job. Why don't you kind of tell a little bit about the story since Kim just got done reading the, the, <laughs> the book of Job, right? Yeah. So you're pretty fresh on it. Let's okay. See. What's going on is that Satan comes up to God and, he, and God says, hey, what have you been doing? And Satan says, I've been roaming around the earth, coming and going. And God says, have you tried my upright and blameless servant, Job? And Satan says, well, no, you have a protective hedge around him. And God says, you can do whatever you want, but do not touch Job. Satan takes his children, his, uh, his everything, his, his, all his animals, and Job had a lot. Job was- He was wealthy. Job was Job, very God well had off. blessed Job yeah. abundantly. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Your house disappears, all of your children Everything. die, you go bankrupt, all in like, boom. Satan goes back to God again. And, so, and God says, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I've been roaming around the earth again. And he says, well, have you tried my servant, Job? And he says, well, no, because you're protecting him. And he says, no, you can inflict Job so Satan goes out and flicks him head to toe with sores. And Job is just miserable. miserable. Just miserable. I mean, oh. I can't even imagine. So what can we learn from the suffering of Job? So to answer your question about this one, there really isn't a good reason for the suffering, but we have come up with four points that help us understand this. Okay. All right, so let's look at these four. Okay. Shall we? I shall. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, God used Job's story to teach Job's wife, his friends, and us Bible readers for countless years, right, of history about suffering, the human condition, and God's character. All right, number two. Number two. This says, God has used Job's story to teach us that suffering is not always related to wickedness. Or, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
but it's a <laughs> part of life. <laughs> right, I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> I was just going to say... Never let me <laughs> No, I was going to say that... You say, I'm always, I'm thinking too fast. That's my problem, I think too fast. <laughs> I was just going to say that maybe, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. It's not your fault. I mean, yeah. this isn't a punishment from God. And I think sometimes we think that our suffering, these trials are because, boy, I did something wrong. God's trying to get back at me. I'm he doesn't sinning, love me or yeah. I'm sinning. And no, Job did nothing wrong. Right. Nothing. Nothing. He was blameless and upright. So I have a verse for this. This is John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. He said you will have tribulation. You now, will. you might or maybe you will. Number three, God has used Job's story to teach us that suffering can bring reward or even joy. And there's our favorite verse in James that I know we say this a lot, but it is a great verse. I know. Oh, do you want me to read oh, you it? Want me to read it? I like you Let to read, me read I it. I like my little verse girls. All right, this is James 1, 2 through 4. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I'll read number four. Well, I would love for you to read number four. All right. God has used Job's story to teach us about God and that he is worthy of our worship no matter what. It's hard and it's easy to praise God when everything is going good. I mean, it's so easy, but have you guys ever praised God when things weren't? Like when your mom has cancer, when you get MS, yeah, when I get a disease, when you're foreclosing on your house, when your son takes his life. Just recently started to learn basically when MS came about, but then things like with my back being hurt, those times I found that if I praise God, that I can still walk, that I can still use my arms, or that I can still have a roof over my head, yeah. or, I mean, it didn't even that's have to idea. do with the fact that I was praising Him. Thank you for giving me, I mean, sorry, right. yeah, that's thank weird. you for taking my child, but right. thank you for giving me 17 years with my child and being able to be a mom yeah. for 17 years. You know, praise Him for the things that you did have. That's a good or idea. Have and then your focus comes off of that trial and onto God and it's so much easier. So that's much a, that's easier. a good point. Okay, you guys. What? You're I was drinking. drinking. I was drinking from my big cup. Oh. This, this is my, okay, so this is my camera cup. Okay, well I can do this, right? Okay, this is my everyday cup. <laughs> Filled with like, water. <laughs> I'm back. It's not pop. <laughs> yeah. It's like a big gulp. Anyways. So um, that was fun. It's interesting to see how um, Satan is at work in constantly. the world yeah. constantly and how we have this great God that in the end protects gonna, us. It's going to beat him. What? Well, I mean, it's neat that well, he, prote yeah, he's and he there protects to protect us. us and he's there. He, we're his children and he's helping mm -hmm. us to learn and um, grow and become more faithful in him and have a better relationship with him, which, what? Nothing. Are you gonna say something? Yeah, I had a thought. Look at see, him. No, 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 no. Shut up. No, no. Well, you see, when you're saying something, it makes yeah. me think of something else. I know. Okay, what? Oh. Well, no, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go really ahead and finish annoying. what you were saying. I don't even know now. <laughs> Anyways, what I was, what, it really what? is interesting because it's only in the Bible twice where it, it tells us how Satan has addressed God about other people. Mm -hmm. No, what, what you just said something that made me think. Yeah. I mean, think of, you know, okay, so we know that Satan has to get God's permission mm -hmm. to, to give us hardships. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of thinking of the negative in that way, think of how many times God has said to Satan, no. 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 And Satan goes and says, you know, you, can I give you a disease? And, and God says, no, Satan, you can't. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, if you think about it that way, He's probably protecting us every day. Oh my gosh. I mean, you know, it's That's like right. Satan goes to God or whatever and says, can I cause that you to get into an accident day and, and ruin your car? And God says, no, I'm protecting. Yeah. 
Not today, Satan. You know, that... I think it's kind of cool. It's really cool. I mean, instead of looking at like the, the, the minor hardships that we go through, how much he probably has protected us that we don't even know about it. We will never know about it until we get to heaven. And you know what? In the end, Satan loses. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, join us in the next video. We'll see you then.